This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Dave McCann. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, June 9th. Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with a guy who just signed an NIL deal that gets him a new Bentley, Dave McCann. Yeah, it's fantastic. Let me just tell you, uh, I was born in the wrong generation. Because my NIL, NIL deal was nil from my parents. Literally nil. NIL, yeah. nil. <laughs> and, and if I played quarterback for Ohio State today, I'd be driving around in a Bentley. You know, that's a pretty sweet gig. C.J. Stroud of Ohio yeah. State has signed a deal where he gets a Bentley Bentega to drive around on a free auto lease. Okay, it's uh, worth 160 up to 200 depending on the trim, right? Yeah, you bet. But he is no Jacob Conover. Don't forget. Jacob Conover has a minivan that is decked out in BYU gear. That's a sweet ride. It's hard to miss around town. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that the other day. I'm just like, Did you really there goes it? Conover. Nice. There's, there's, uh, there's Jacob rolling around town. So, listen, you could have the uh, Bentega or you could have the windows of heaven open for that 10%. You know? <laughs> Look at that. Uh, <laughs> which, one, which one's going to help you? There's no comp, especially with the brick bra- uh, background compared to the sunset. You know, so, to, to Stroud's yeah. credit, I was amazed at how he just lit up Utah's defense in the Rose Bowl with his top two receivers not even playing and half the team on the bench. He became Cougar Nation's favorite quarterback yeah, so at the moment. Enjoy that, Bentley. Just don't wreck it. Remember, it's a lease. you got to take it back. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't get a fender bender. And uh, drive your offensive linemen around it yeah, so they'll protect exactly. you in the fall. Every 45 days, you can switch that out. That's pretty nice. Here's your show lineup. Men's Hoops looks forward to uh, the season. They're going to stuff the roster with talent, we hope, right? Mark Pope will join us in studio to discuss how that's going and what he thinks of the talent coming back. What teams are Big 12 ready right now to compete for a title and which need some work, we'll discuss. And the Cougars bring home some hardware from the West Coast Conference, an update from Track Nationals. And we have a new head baseball coach, which brings us to today's headlines. It is Trent Pratt. He's the new coach, served as interim head coach since uh, early April. He went 16-9, and 10-6 and six in the WCC during that span. Uh, led the Cougars to a fourth-place finish. They had to come from behind to get that and qualify for the postseason tournament, which they did. Coach Pratt joined the Cougars in 2013 as an assistant with Mike Littlewood. Help BYU claim four WCC regular season titles and an NCAA tournament berth back in 2017. He's got one year in the WCC, and then Trent Pratt will lead the Cougars into the Big 12. Congrats to uh, Trent. His daughter and my daughter were competing against each other in softball the other day. Yeah, what happened? I don't know who won because my son had a little injury with a, a zipper in his neck. It was an incident. So I had to take off, but I don't know who won, and I haven't asked. For the ninth straight year, BYU wins the West Coast Conference Commissioner's Cup, a competition of an athletic department's overall prowess in the league. The women won the All-Sport Award, while the men took fourth. I was surprised to see that the men took fourth in that. Uh, Connor Mance won Male Scholar Athlete of the Year. Congrats to BYU, nine in a row. The rest of the league now knows what BYU feels against Gonzaga in basketball. <laughs> exactly. And when BYU leaves, uh, it's up for grabs. <laughs> I think they'll be happy to see the Cougars go. Track and field nationals are underway in Eugene, Oregon. Kenneth Rooks and Colton Yardley qualified for the finals in the 3,000-meter steeplechase and the 400-meter hurdles, respectively, at the outdoor track and field championships. They did that last night. They're going to compete for national titles on Friday. And our guy Sebastian Fernandez finished 11th in the 800. Second team All-American. More on him later. The women begin their competition today. They got a shot at a top five finish. We wish him the best. Congrats to Sebastian. We talked with him last week. Uh, if you missed it, you got to go watch this on YouTube. Walk on literally two months ago to second team All-American yesterday. <laughs> Just That's an awesome. incredible story. In volleyball news, Davide Gardini in Italy were swept by France in game one of the Volleyball Nations League. Italy plays Poland today. And in Louisiana, Heather Olmstead, assistant coach for the USA U21 team, beat Canada in the Pan American Cup 3-0. Argentina on deck to determine the pool winner. Best of luck to Heather and Team USA. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. So earlier this week, a person uh, named at Kyle Umlang on Twitter, not a BYU homie, 
posted a graphic about the new Big 12, listing top 25 finishes, national championships, percentage of teams ranked, etc. Bureau showed well in it, basically placing third in a myriad of categories behind Texas and Oklahoma. Which brings us to this question, Dave. Which teams are ready to compete for a title in the Big 12 right away, and which teams have some work to do? Here's that chart you're referring to. Good luck uh, breaking that down. <laughs> it's very colorful. <laughs> You see, the early part's the hottest time of the year, and then things cool <laughs> off, and then we get more moisture. Weatherman Dave would have been good, dude. <laughs> Weatherman Dave would have been awesome. So that breaks down how the Cougars did this last season and how they would compare against the Big 12. So I, I think, well, obviously cross-country, men's and women's cross-country, they're going to run into the Big 12 as contenders. Pun intended? Pun intended. Yeah, it's Thursday. Pun yeah, intended. Yeah, okay. okay. I, think they, I think they got a shot uh, to get in there and, and, uh, and get after it because they're doing it right now on the national scene. Mm -hmm. Who else? I th yeah, I think uh, in look, walking through all the sports, which, by the way, people have asked this question. There are three sports BYU doesn't have that compete in the Big 12. Equestrian, rowing, and wrestling. Wrestling! I'm <laughs> just waiting for that, right? Okay, um, gymnastics. Oklahoma won the national championship. BYU would have been the second best team. In the Big 12 this year. Really? So right away. Gymnastics. Yeah, they compete right away. Women's volleyball. Texas is a juggernaut, but Kansas and Baylor also went to the Sweet 16 this last year. I think BYU competes right away for a championship there. I'm not sure they beat Texas I initially. Maybe they do. But once Texas leave, leaves, BYU's right there. Um, you mentioned both cross countries. Awesome. Iowa State's pretty good. They were the runner-up to BYU, by the way, uh, in, in the men's. Uh, Wesley Kipp, too, was the guy that was on Connor Mance's heels. Yeah. Uh, they are pretty good there in men and women. And women's soccer. Women's soccer, um, only two bids from the Big 12 last year. The WCC, I believe, had three or four. So, uh, including Santa Clara, who also right. made the national championship, yeah. of course, the Final Four there, hosting. So, yeah, so, like there are several sports where BYU jumps in right away. We think football will be competitive. It might take uh, – once, once uh, tw if 22 goes like we think, there's going to be a dearth of big names that leave. Um, or, or uh, there will be a dearth because big names leave. So maybe in 24, 25, BYU starts to be in the top kind of three or four, and, and we'll see what happens. Now, um, softball, I think, jumps in too. Yeah. Now, if you watched the uh, College World Series last night, right? You saw Oklahoma beat Texas 16 to 1. Once they leave, once they leave, I think softball's uh, right there in the mix, which is exciting. They will not have the problem they had. A couple weeks ago, and uh, strength schedule won't be there. Right, and Iowa State came in uh, for a friendly uh, during the season, and mm -hmm. BYU beat them three straight. Baylor the previous year, yeah. BYU won, which is awesome. Think, so I think softball goes in yeah. with a chance to go right to the top. Texas and, and mostly Oklahoma. Texas isn't even seated, and they got their way into this Yes, yeah, incredible run. But, uh, but Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, who had, I think was the defending champ, those guys, the Cowboys will be tough. But get Texas and Oklahoma out of there, in, and, uh, and BYU in the Olympic sports comes charging in. Yes. You take Texas and Oklahoma out for football, and the Cougars come charging in. Mainly just Oklahoma. Texas has an unjack squad. Right. Let's be honest. They haven't. Okay, men and women's golf, I think BYU will compete as well. Uh, Oklahoma State's tremendous. Texas won the Natty in the men's side, um, but they've been dealing with Pepperdine, who won the national championship two years ago. Yeah, they got so it's not go. like not like the WCC has been a bunch of chumps. They've it's been really good for BYU, especially in soccer and golf and whatnot. Okay, work to do. Let's just address the elephant in the room: men's hoops. Men's hoops competing for a championship in the Big Twelve might be something that will be a tough ask, given Baylor, Kansas, Texas Tech, right? Maybe at some point BYU gets to that level, but you're asking, like, Jimmer to show up again type of deal. The hope is that BYU goes at least 500 and is an 11 seed, and they can do what Iowa State did this year, right. go to the Sweet 16. I don't necessarily care, Dave, about winning conference championships in basketball, maybe that in men's hoops. Maybe that's we're conditioned to not expect that because BYU hasn't won one since 01. I'm more concerned about do you make the NCAA tournament and can you win a game or two? Yeah, and I think it's about building, and we're going to talk to Mark Pope here in a few minutes about how he's building uh, with another season before uh, they join the toughest league in, in America. And it appears to be trending like it's not going to get, you know, they're not going to get weaker for a long time. They're getting uh, better with Houston. And then Houston the, and Cincinnati yeah. and, and uh, I don't Houston. know about Central Florida, but, but BYU They had a good year, year two years ago. Two years yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think you're right. I think uh, this year's team, if you plopped them into the Big 12, it wouldn't be where BYU fans are used to being. And that might be the case for a little while. Yeah, um, and that's all and, right. And that's okay. That's okay because uh, it is not Santa Clara that you're getting beat by. 
We can accept a big t- <laughs> yes. We can accept these because we have we have an ego right uh, here. We expect BYU to be a certain level. And but when we you- just said we won the the commissioner's cup for the ninth year out of ten that we've even been in the league. We've dominated the overall sport. Yes. And then we just expect that in in basketball and football as well. Yes. A couple other teams have some work to do. Baseball certainly got to up yeah. its game. Trent Pratt is out recruiting actively right now in Houston to do that. Five of the ten teams went to the NCAA tournament this, just weeks ago. That's good. That's a tough baseball league. It's and, really good. And, and BYU, it was all they could do to take fourth in the WCC, which is a decent baseball league. But day in and day out, and, and they got to get better. And they, they yep. saw Oklahoma State for a, a series down yep. in Texas. Took a game. Got a good taste of that. And they yep. could have taken the series, yep. but they fumbled it away. Um, that's a good baseball league. Women's basketball, uh, well, I think women's basketball will be good. I'm not sure they compete for a title uh, quickly, but six of the ten went to the NCAA tournament, and they're really good. The BYU the women's, women's team this last year, which is pretty good. Until they they could have hung. They flatlined in the tournament. Yep. Where would they have been in the Big 12 this year? I'm, I'm imagining they would have been third or fourth. Third or fourth? It's pretty good. Maybe maybe second. Tennis, swim, and dive certainly have some work to do as well. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's exciting because – what we hope is BYU will continue to get the kids that they've been getting who want to be at BYU. Parents probably went to BYU, grew up fans of the Cougs. The hope is that you're getting some of the fringe um, players who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who now consider BYU differently because they're in a Big 12. And then what you hope is what Utah has been getting, Dave. Kids who want to play in that league against the teams they wanted to go to. Either out of being petty and vindictive or yeah. just they love that league. And the hope is that uh, in the next five to ten years, BYU continues to get guys who are, are like-minded individuals who want to come here for a great education, play on a really good team, and then compete. And we think that in most of the sports, BYU is going to be very competitive in a Power 5 league, that it won't be this just huge hill that BYU has yeah. to climb. And football, by the way, I want to point out, is very unique in that they have been preparing for a league like this for a long time. Right. BYU Since the is, day they went independent. Right? They were waiting for this moment. The other t- – like, women's soccer doesn't, doesn't need the Big 12 to get better. They're just awesome. Women's volleyball is just awesome. Cross country is just awesome. So I'm, I'm excited to see what they can do. And, by the way, we're coming off – what Spencer and I argued, this has been the greatest overall athletic year in the history of BYU. You could argue 81 because you have the Elite Eight with Danny Ainge. You have Jim McMahon Sr. You have men's golf winning the national championship. Baseball team was really good. Ba- Baseball is about to, two years from then, uh, be number one in the country yeah. with Wally Joyner and Corey Snyder and those guys. So there have been some great years. I, I hope that th- this is, uh, and this, is, this has been the argument with football, is it the new norm or was it an outlier? The hope is that it's the new norm. I think it's the new norm if you stay in the WCC, but you're going to head to a whole new challenge now, and then it'll take some buildup. But, uh, but th- there's no reason they can't continue. They're just going to have to do it at a, at a higher level. And th- the good news for the Big 12 is they're not just getting a one-trick pony. Uh, hey, we got a football program that fits a football need, which is really why all this happened. Um, and then you just got to beat all the other, you know, we're bringing all the scrubs with us because they're, attached to the football program. This is not that case, and that's great for the Big 12 because they get a football program to fit that need, and they get contenders in just about every sport, and those that aren't contenders have the ability to get that way with the national recruiting base that BYU has and the success and all the hype of joining a P5. Oh, and they also have the largest football stadium once Oklahoma and Texas leave. They've got the largest basketball arena, and, um, and they have their own TV network. It's, this is a good time to have BYU come join your league. It's a great time. No question. Uh, we're ready to go. And I'm reminded of those facts as we walk around campus, and I'm taking my cousin every day who's in town from Arizona staying with us to a basketball camp. And I think uh, as I walk around, there are thousands of kids on campus right now in a variety of sports from all over the country. How many schools pull this off? It's rare, right? People are coming in here. Um, to, to hopefully get a scholarship, uh, you know, offer. If, like, there are football scholarships being offered this week to kids in high school where BYU's been connecting with them, and now they're here, you know. And, and this is a unique situation. And, uh, you know, I wish my cousin was getting one. He's probably not, but uh, he's working hard. <laughs> Listen, there's two kinds of camps. <laughs> there's the camps that, that kids go to to do just that. Yep. And then there's the same camp that kids go to 
that their parents are saying, you're getting out of this house for a week. I'm <laughs> yeah. sending you to that I'll camp. I'll pick you up at five. I'm sending yeah. you to soccer camp or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> and so they, they, they come together as one. And then years down the road when somebody signs and they go, well, my first taste of BYU was when I was 14. Yeah. And I came to the I Might have been the when camp. they were five or six. Or you know, five or six. It just depends, uh, you know, what you're doing there. By the way, BYU sports camps like eight years ago had this commercial um, that that featured random clips of people and young Jimmer Fredette oh, was yeah? in one of these clips, nice. and I was like, "Did we did we notice that little chubby Jimmer there? It's pretty awesome." He dropped some pounds. He's got better. Dropped some buckets and pounds. <laughs> Our question of the day: Which BYU team wins the first Big Twelve title? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation. On BYU Sports Nation. Wayne on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. BYU fan Caleb on Instagram. Based on results from last season, I think women's soccer or football would be most likely. However, any sport can rise to the challenge, so game on. What's your opinion on this? Which team wins the first one? Well, I, I think cross country is going to win the first one. And it'll be women specifically because they run before the men. Yeah. and then uh, they could both win. But I think soccer could as well. Mm. Uh, and, and women's volleyball. I think women's and women's volleyball is going to be going to be tough. I think I think one of those three won it. First. Yeah, that that'll be a big moment in uh, athletics history. Yeah. That first championship trophy coming home, it'll be awesome. Continue to weigh in on uh, social media. Coming up, did the Celtics give BYU a good idea on how to take down the Zags next season? Mm, we'll tell you. And Mark Pope tells us how the filling of the roster is going for next year. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Every day, I help an animal walk again. Four different vets told me that he would never be able to walk. Here's his leg. Oh my god, That's so yeah. cool. <laughs> She wants to move, and this device is allowing her to do so. I just knew he would walk. Every single step, it's doing exactly what I want. You can see the trust. You can see the connection in her brain forming. Best is yet to come. It is. It's only going to get sweeter. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tomorrow for the Reviewables 2001. Spencer and Jeremy examine the year that was under Gary Croton, Brandon Doman, Luke Staley and company. That's Friday noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. That play right there is on the sideline down in Vegas. Uh, that play by Doman was um, the play before it was fourth down and four. BYU's trailing, just a couple minutes left. He hits Mike Regal for 44 yards. That next play that we cut off, he was heading to the end zone. And then we um, were waiting after the game to interview him. And no, where's Doman? No one's seen Doman. He had separated his shoulder in the game, finished the game with his separated realize that. shoulder. Wow. And he was in the locker room getting a priesthood blessing. And that's why the media had to wait for him to come out before wow. he gave the interview. That kept BYU undefeated. Yep. You know, they got to 12-0 before their first loss. But 35-31 to Vegas... 
That was a much closer game than people thought. There's always close games against uh, perceived inferior competition. You just got to win. Yeah. You just got to win the game. And the, and the BYU crowd was huge. Yeah, was yes, they were. Night. UNLV was also there, we heard. Our next <laughs> guest is not only the head coach of the BYU men's basketball team, but a budding actor and director, as seen in one of the newest sketches from Studio C. Here it is. Okay, these X's are the audience. These O's are the offense. Austin, this is you. You're the point guard. You start with the ball, and you pass the ball into the center. Garrett! Uh-huh. I know they're massive, but focus! <laughs> you're the center because you're tall and because you have the microwave meal. You catch the ball in the post. <laughs> then, when the double team comes, you read the post split. You kick it out to the perimeter, Austin. You catch, feet set, down and ready, bang the three, win the game. Any questions? Yeah. Is a three-pointer like a joke or? Yes, hence the three points. Try and keep up. Points equal last. <laughs> Mark Pope on Studio C, who now joins us in Studio B. What's up, man? How you doing? How was that? It was it was actually so fun. My girls grew up on Studio C watching it. They love it so much. It's uh, it, it's these actors are so incredibly talented. So it was super fun to do. We love when you come on the show because you're honest. So so here's a question that that uh, sparks an honest response. When you're in the huddle sometimes and it's crunch time in a game and you roll out a play to your guys, do you look over there and and and? <laughs> And see, see some kids going. I have no idea what he's talking about. But yes, coach. You know, the, these <laughs> we could do, we should do a show sometime just on what happens in the huddles. One of my favorite stories to talk about is we're at Houston. It's my first year coaching. We've just there's there's uh, 11 seconds left. Our ball. Uh, we have a chance to go win it. Right. Um, down one, and uh, we drop a play. Jake Toulson is starting with it, and we end up with the turnover and them going the other way. Game over. Magically, there is some incredible like, gift from heaven. They travel on a they travel. wide open layup. Yeah. So you talk about genius coaching. So <laughs> we pull the guys in the huddle. All we have left is a 30. We're racing through it really quick. And ultimately what comes out of my mouth is like, TJ, we're going to pass you the ball. I need you to dribble as fast as you can and score it. And sure enough, that's exactly what he did. That's kind of the Tremendous genius coaching. that happens in timeout yes. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that's one of the iconic plays of uh, your, your uh, time here at BYU yeah. is that play. Little do we know, that win mattered a ton in helping you uh, yeah. for what would have been an NCAA tournament seed barring COVID. It's uh, a Big 12 homie. It's a team that's tremendous. You know, that was huge. Yeah. Okay, so obviously a lot of conversation and interest in kind of the roster rebuild with – with, uh, you know, Tijon and A.B. going out, Caleb going to Baylor and so on. What's it been like right now as you try and uh, refill this roster and get some new talent? Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. I think it's going to be this way every year, right? There's going to be just um, – there's just going to be changes every year, and, and it gives uh, – it gives, you know, with the new uh, transfer rules, it gives – uh, players a chance to go find out what they want, at least what they think they want. It gives us a chance to rebuild, and it's it's super stressful and super exciting, and, and you get to be really creative, and it's just about finding – it's, it's so important for us here to find like the exact right fit pieces. Uh, so I love it. I, I mean, it's just as it's it's uh, made the off season equally as exciting as the season. If you uh, come on this show every time uh, one of your guys announced that they were leaving, or that somebody in the Twitter pool announced they were visiting, or um, you'd be on every single day. Yeah. Uh, Can we so, just do that? Yeah, I would love it, man. Yeah, I, every you know, day. I, I'm unfiltered. I'll give you all the inside <laughs> scoop. What was it like? Because in the in the world of coaching and, and also an assistant coach that, that he had to go find and hire. But all of those moving parts and the exodus comes before the new guys come in. Um, and, and it's relatively quiet in the Pope camp. What was it like for you? to not just want to come out there and say, hey, the sky is not falling. I'm yeah. building over here. Yeah, it's actually super fun. Like, um, you know, sometimes there are days when, like, um, there's a lot of activity, social media or whatever, and it's kind of fun to just, like, check in every time. It's like you're just eating your popcorn. Like, what crazy thing are they going to say? Um, one of the <laughs> g beautiful things about h here at BYU is, is fans care so much and um, information, you know, people can be super creative about uh, the information they invent. 
And it, it actually, it's you know, I always remind myself that it's such a gift to be here because that only happens because people care. And, um, and so it's a fun process. It re it's really fun to kind of do our work and then kind of have a little eye towards kind of some of the crazy commentary that's going on. It makes it super fun. You don't want to reach the fan apathy point, right? Where it's like, eh. Whatever. Oh, no, no, no. That's right? the People worst. People get rid of them because yes. they want this team to be back in the tournament. Yes. And da, da, da. I'm not going to lie. I love some controversy. Because it it keeps people engaged. Yeah, it's that's true. And it so does. it's uh, it's just it the whole deal is fun. At the end of the day, like it's such an incredible gift to play here and represent this university and these fans. Like it just is. And um, and so it uh, we're in a special place. We get to do a special job. At what point in the sort of timeline preseason do you feel like you need to have your roster completed? Because there's still a few spots available, right? Yeah, so it's um, we'll we'll get the roster done when we find the right pieces, and 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 it's more important that we're right than we're rushed always mm. in in these decisions with our coaching staff. It's way more important that we're right than we're rushed, and certainly with our personnel on our team, you know, with with change comes unbelievable opportunity to reinvent ourselves and with this transition into the Big 12 there is nothing we need more than to reinvent ourselves and get better the last three years have been historic I mean we had three straight years ranked in the top 25 two where we finished in the top 25 that's only happened twice before ever in the 120 years of BYU history and still we're looking at it's like we got to get so much better and so kind of out of some chaos man is a chance for 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 reinvent ourselves and that's what we're in the process of doing and we're super excited about it i think there's a, there's an upside and a downside to the portal the downside is a lot of you guys can leave but the upside is as you mentioned uh and and i think the upside really favors you with after what we watched the big 12 do just this last season yep. is you've got to get your whole roster better yep. And this allows you a window to yeah. do it, whereas five, ten years ago, you're back uh, recruiting junior high kids to hopefully someday come here. Yeah, you know, the freshmen that we've recruited uh, when we first got here the first summer, they're just rolling it down right, right. now. Yeah. So so kind of keeping up with the speed and change of the game and our circumstances is really hard. When you're when you're recruiting freshmen, especially yeah. freshmen, some of the freshmen that we'll have here, and I, I actually disagree with you. I think the portal is good, and it's good. I, I don't think there's a no downside. downside. I think it's all good. Like it's just it is sheer. Any time you have opportunity, that's what you're looking for as a player and as a program. And so, I love the portal. Like let's go. So you're okay with. Caleb to Baylor and, and yeah, Gavin to Utah in that regard. A hundred percent. Like, um, you know, you take Gavin. Like, listen, Gavin gave his heart and soul to this place for three years. And it was three in unbelievably difficult emotional yeah. years. Like, who's been through that? And so, you know, Gavin, you know, just in his face and his heart. I mean, I talked to you guys about right before our first game this season about, like, how emotional – he was about kind of facing these demons that he suffered through the last three years. Like, I'm so excited for him to have a fresh start, and he deserves it. And then Caleb, too, like, you know, his his road here wasn't always easy. And yeah. the fact that he gets to go get a fresh start is a special thing. Like, that's a really good thing. And we'll see him again. It's good for him, and it's really good for us. Schedule-wise, when are you going to announce who you're opening with? You We're close? not. We're actually not just announcing the schedule you just show until up. right before the game. <laughs> you just show up. It's going to be like, hey, be a come to the gym tonight. <laughs> And find out who we're playing. That we saw, we that's saw, terrible for promotion on <laughs> yeah, TV. That, that, that's, we're going to have to get with your guys on that. Uh, we saw Utah's on the 17th of December. That came from up yeah. there. And and there are a couple of dates that have been kicked around. San Diego State, that yeah. series. Great reportedly in Vegas. There. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, tease us on some of the home games you got coming. Um, no, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. If you want to know no. the home games, hit me on at coachmarkpope.com. Is that my Twitter handle? That's I don't not, know what that is. You can't add dot com. You call right? it sounds super old <laughs> when you add dot com. I'll give you a cell phone number. Come I'm on, the man. World Wide Web. Just yeah. hit me on the World Do Wide Web. Do not say World Wide Web. <laughs> <laughs> when you're putting a schedule together like this, and you know you're going to have at least two, maybe three shots against the number one team in America yep. again with Gonzaga. Yeah. Uh, you, you, well, and, I mean, you think about Atlantis. I mean, we might have shots against the number one team in the country. We in would Atlantis like to be there too. with you as well. Yeah. And, and, um, and then, you know, this Creighton team now is uh, they, they've, you know, they're bringing everybody back and they've recruited well. They're going to be a 
top five team by the time we get to them also. Um, and so the schedule is not for the faint of heart, no, obviously. No. You get to go to tough, San Diego State. It's yeah. always tough. That's what yeah. we do. Like, we love it. But, I mean, you, that's our deal. It's like, let's go bring it on, take on all comers, and see if we can survive it. And I love it in hoops. You're rewarded for a tough schedule. Yes, in football, there's not really a reward. We that's can't right. quantify it. It's fun to have at least the net and the quads yep. and so on. Tell us about the return missionaries. So we know that Richie Saunders is home. Dallin Hall got yep. home last week. Yep. What's uh, Tanner Toulson's timeline? So Richie uh, has been home for about a month, and he's actually um, – He's actually dribbling without looking at the ball, which is super exciting. I'm kidding. You know this rehab of missionaries. You're totally ready you know for the this, Big 12. Uh, th- these guys would be really special, man. Yeah. They're, they're, they're super talented players uh, um, uh, that are incredibly hungry, uh, uh, that, that um, were recruited at a really, really high level and chose to turn down their whole life for the last two years and go serve people. And um, so uh, they're rolling, and we got two of them on campus. We're still waiting for a couple to get back on campus, and and uh, and then we'll you know have a fuller roster. Are these guys guys you'll count on right away, or are they a year away? We're counting on everybody. Now, the the, the one thing for us is we are probably uh, I think it's hard to argue against it. The, we're the world's experts on rehabbing missionaries, and we are a slow <laughs> on ramp program. We are because um, the 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 biggest worry is not going slow. The biggest worry is having setbacks. And so yes. we go really slow. Uh, when I showed Richie his schedule for the first three months once he got back, he was just like, no, that is not enough. That's not going to work. But it just is if, if we on-ramp these guys the right way, they'll be really successful. We, we just have gone through those conversations with Dallin and and, uh, and Tanner will be back soon. We'll have the same, same work with him. Kalani uh, has gone through it as well yep. to where they're like going, hey, we've got to come up with a plan. They yep. would prefer to gray shirt guys, honestly, yeah, where yeah, they just get yeah, in the weight room. Yeah. And football's a little different, right? Well, and interesting, if you talk to Trey Stewart, you know, Trey Stewart is, um, he, he would tell you that he's finally back to himself. Like, he's finally After back to moving. Year, right? Yeah, and yeah. so, and yeah. so that, that's, that's actually a real thing. I mean, you know, I don't, you show me another example in any sport anywhere where you just, you know, where you just, vacate the sport for two years i mean well may, plus maybe, one in this maybe, case maybe mike maybe mj was the one guy and he was at least playing baseball and golf, <laughs> and, and and golf. golf. a lot of yeah, golf. Yeah, playing golf watch the last dance see danny uh betting with him during the finals <laughs> right which is super fun okay let's talk about elijah bryant he's in the turkish league finals with uh an adolu Efes. uh you played for this team in yeah. turkey yes that's awesome. Can we talk about Elijah Bryant? Let's yeah. Do it. So first of all, uh, my social media acumen was quite challenged when on the I, World Wide Web, I, on the World Wide Web, <laughs> on Instagram or Twitter. I'm not sure where it was, but I put out something about him being the first player ever in the history of basketball to go back to back NBA champion, Euro League champion. And I, I don't actually know if that's true. Somebody corrected me and said there was one other person in, in 1977. But like, think about what he just did. Incredible. It is incredible, you know. I mean, I just there's no words for it, and 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 teams matter, and um, when you get that reputation of, of hey, if you want to win a championship, go get Elijah Bryant at whatever level. It's yep. pretty special, and not only that, he's an unbelievable human being. He's such a great representative of this university. He loves God. He just is a he's a spectacular human being. I'm super happy for him. What's it like playing over there? Compared to you played in the league, you played, you won national championship. What's it like playing over in Turkey? Well, so I'm going to make this as brief as possible. I may have told this story before. Deep Blue Podcast, you talked about it as well. Yeah, yeah. But tell it to this audience. So just really briefly, you know, I'm I'm fresh out of college. I got drafted in the second round by the Indiana Pacers. Went to camp. They're like, hey, we love you, but you're not going to get a play on this roster. Where and I got this ridiculous offer overseas. I'm like, let's go. And so I land in Turkey, I roll in, meet the team, and it's media day. And so they have us all dressed in our uniforms, take us out in the courtyard, put us in a circle, and right in the, and then all of a sudden, two gentlemen, just full head to toe in orange jumpsuits, literally, walk in with a, with a ram, like, like I'm talking about like a full grown ram, a bucket and a machete. <laughs> and they actually, they actually, sacrifice the ram right there. I mean, I don't know how graphic to get, but they... Like, it's Old Testament right now. We're in a circle, and they slit its throat, and they collected the blood in a bucket, and then walked to each of us and dipped their fingers in the blood and said something in a language I don't understand and wiped the blood across our foreheads. It was a as cultural a moment. It was, it was an incredible cultural moment. Mm. And I was like, first of all, 
I was like, where am I in good and bad ways? Like, I was like, this isn't really incredible that I'm good to be a part of this. And then I was also wondering, like, is it, am I going to get in trouble for this? Yeah. And um, every day after that was just as much of an adventure. It was just incredible. And, and to go have a chance to be a part of a new culture and be welcomed into, like, the practice and traditions there. And then it was super fun, actually. Interestingly enough, uh, you know, I played for the Milwaukee Bucks, and Elijah won a championship with the Bucks last right. year. You're like tied at the hip with and him, And this man. year, he's he's FS. He's just a way better player than I ever was. <laughs> I don't think PETA would like animal sacrifice prior to a season for your team. Just throwing I, I don't know that's going to fly here yeah, in the States right so. now, but yeah. it was actually it was, it was was really remarkable to be a part of it. Yeah. If you're going to do something like that, by the way, we just give us a heads up. Oh, could you imagine we'll the ratings? Yeah, in there. And the PETA cut. <laughs> and, the, Mark and the aftermath. Yeah, that would Talk not be about good. It. That's awesome. Well, best of luck with the return missionaries coming in, filling out the roster, the schedule that you won't tell us about. Yep. Uh, we appreciate the time, man. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Coming up, which BYU team do you believe will be the first to hoist a Big 12 championship? And Mark should listen to this. The thing happened last night in the NBA Finals that the Cougars should consider doing against Gonzaga next year after the break. This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Gather the family for a midweek pick-me-up with an all-new lineup Wednesdays on BYU TV. Is that cool? Is that okay? You want inspiring? Yeah, we got that. Fun? Definitely. And surprising? Well, you'll just have to find out. Enjoy a marathon of good works to lift and inspire you for the rest of your week. See it all Wednesdays on BYU TV or anytime on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. BYU Sports Nation, they interact with the show and get great content throughout the day. Follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Dave. I am Jerem. Let's whip it. Good Whip Round is presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. I'm still, uh, I'm still buzzing about that animal sacrifice story. That was quite the, uh, quite the story Pope. we just had here. All right, foxbet.com has BYU's over-under season win number at seven and a half. Are you all over the over? Yes. There's, I don't, I don't think there's uh, much of a way it could go under that. I think, uh, especially if Jaron Hall's healthy, there's no way. Yeah, the, we're going ten. There, we're going healthy. ten. Are you calling your shot again like last year? Yeah. Yeah, because show me, show me three teams that they can't beat. Right. Oh. You know, and then we get in the argument Looking of the good. two teams that are going to beat them, and some of those are 50-50 games. Yep. Yeah. A Jets fan site posts some footage of Zach Wilson during OTAs with a nice sidearm throw. How much stock do you put in the clips of OTA practice throws? I don't put stock in them, but I watch them. 100%. Like everyone else. 100%. It's like, hey, here's something from practice. What happened to practice? Look at this screen pass. This, he is really coming along. He's added weight. He's stronger. This, that. Here's the screen pass, and you're like, Okay, I'm watching. I love it. And listen, when Athletics puts out highlights from fall camp, they're extremely judicious on the stories they are telling yeah. and the perception of who is being featured and why. 
because they don't want it's all Jaron Hall. It's like, well, does Conover not play? Or it's all Gunnar Romney. Where's Puka? You know, and if a guy's hurt, obviously they're not going to show him or whatever. There's a lot of thought that goes into that. Listen, if Messi's bouncing a ball on his head, everyone who's into soccer is watching him mm -hmm. for as long as he's going to do it. Yep. We gravitate toward what we love, and Americans love football. Ryan Rico comes in seventh on the big game boomers top hunters in the country. Mm -hmm. Now we know you uh, deeply appreciate yes. Ryan's skill set. Uh, will he win a BYU game this season? I don't believe punters can win a game unless it's fake punters. They can lose them. Score. They can, they lose, can them. lose them by a shank punt or something. But um, no, he uh, he is so awesome. He didn't have enough punts to really qualify nationally, but his 48.6 would have been fourth in the country. He only punts 3.1 times a game. Aaron Roderick is to thank for this. If I'm a great punter, by the way, I'm not saying Ryan should do this, but don't I go to, go to the crappiest team in the country just so I can show my leg off somewhere? Because if you're on a great team, you're winning, but you never punt. That's true, but what, we th <laughs> what, we, what we've learned from the NFL is if you're good, they find you. They will find you, and, and they're going to find Ryan Rico. He is He's an good. NFL punter, dude. Absolutely. Okay, during warm-ups for the NBA Finals Game 3 last night, the Warriors complained the rims were too high in the pregame. In fact, they were two inches too high. Should BYU look into this type of tactic against Gonzaga next year? Look, if you if you can get away with it, and the, Celt <laughs> and the Celtics almost did. Uh, Belichick, is that you working on the rims? Whatever helps. I was watching that game last night, and when Curry and um, uh, Thompson, Thompson and were just lights out. Yeah. They're just lights. It doesn't matter where they are on the floor. It's like, I guess if you can't guard them out there, then you just change the rims just the rim. in here. But uh, and then the Celtics beat them. Celtics, Celtics play defense. It's, well, when you get 77 points from the big three, that'll do. Yeah. First time since 86 or 7, they said, in a final so, game. So you know coming out tomorrow night uh, for game four, the Warriors are going to be going. Is that rim the same height? Yeah. You know, now, now are they totally in their heads? Paranoid. Are they in their heads? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The uh, LA Angels played Nickelback songs for every player's walk-up music last night in hopes of ending their 13-game losing streak. Nope, keep it going. It didn't work. Keep it going. What band would be your choice to for streak busting tunes? Uh maybe U2. I like U2 a lot. 21 Pilots maybe. If here's the thing, if I want to my guys to relax, if I'm the manager, maybe I might do we might be giants or weird Al. <laughs> just to be mix it up and you know, or maybe some Jack Johnson just be chill about it. My son's got a softball team. They play up there at Utah State, around there in their community league, and they were talking about walk-up songs. Yeah. He asked me what my opinion was for him. He gave me some suggestions, and I go, you know what? I'd go with uh, Dancing Queen or Sweet Caroline. He's yep. like, what? That's the worst. I go, put the picture in a good mood. Yep. You know, if you come up with some Too monster chill. song that's like, oh, Metallica. I think he's taking me deep. Yeah, exactly. You come up there with something fun. Now he's singing in his head. <laughs> he's going to lob that thing in there. Uh, he didn't. He went with his stuff, and it didn't work out for him. So then I suggested maybe maybe you change your walk-up song. Put yeah. the Carpenters in there. They're, hey, Do nice. Something. Put the Osmonds to go yeah, local change here. Change the mood of the ball coming in. The Angels lost one nothing last night. Shout out to my brother-in-law, Dan Barnes, who loves the Angels. I am very happy as a Mariners fan. This is, now the Mariners are back in contention in the AOS. Congratulations. So let, let's go. Coming up, rise and shout out to a BYU Cougar setting a goal and then hitting it. We, li we like to reward those folks on this show. Pretty awesome story. And more of your responses on which BYU team wins the first Big 12 title. And what do you think of animal sacrifice? This is BYU Sports Day. Accidents don't just happen 9 to 5. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24-7. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always. And get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24-7. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com.
Meet Max, our newest addition to the White House staff. We are the first family, and we were hoping that you could help us out. You want me to babysit some Russian kid? Someone is looking to hurt both of our families, TJ. How is this even possible? An American posing as a Russian. Why should I be scared? You've got Max. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Sports Nation has its own YouTube channel. Get all the interviews by subscribing to and share the BYU Sports Nation YouTube channel. One of those is from Mark Pope, and that was one of the classic Mark Pope conversations we've ever had. Of course, highlighted by the experience in Turkey with animal sacrifice. Yeah, there right and there him on the going, court. What's going on? Yeah, um, getting getting some text, uh, you know, from uh, John, by the way, about Old Testament curriculum being worked into the show. You're welcome. Thanks uh, to yeah, Mark Pope. We're doing he, our part. He also addressed the roster. Obviously, that's been the conversation. I don't know about you, but that's a thing that almost everybody uh, that wants to ask me a question randomly in the grocery store or whatever is like, BYU basketball, what's the roster like? He doesn't seem concerned like everybody else. No, and um, which I thought was – I just wish he would do it more often just because uh, we, we get those questions all the time. It's like after the fourth player leaves, what's going on with basketball? And then and I even wrote an article about it in the Deseret News. It was like, hey, no one who's averaged more than 7.7 7 points has left. But everyone under that has. That's not a bad thing. Mm. Um, and we talked about the freedoms. He says he's all for the portal. He's all for people being able to leave and all for people being able to come in. I think Amber Whiting would, would like there not to be a portal for Shaley Gonzalez. At the moment. Yep. At the moment. But um, but we'll see who comes in, those kind of things. I, I just I, I, I thought it was good that he uh, just kind of said, hey, here's what it's like being the BYU basketball coach during an off season of a lot of movement. And, uh, and, and, and replacing a, an assistant coach um, and, and still recruiting and, and building. Uh, I wish did say it more often, but today we got it. And then we also got the wildest animal sacrifice story of all the, the animal Turkish sac basketball league we've ever heard of. Of all the animal sacrifice stories we've had on this show, that was the craziest. <laughs> that, was, yeah. that was interesting. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that, that he did that. And I think Cougar fans are like, hey, it's okay having things – crazy life is crazy what's what, what we love is little updates of like okay let me explain some of the crazy and here's how we're going to come out of it then and, we're like okay and with that said that's that's comforting but ultimately we need to see guys come in yeah. that will make a difference yeah. and and i guess my my question um was about the timing of that like how long before the good ones are gone question mark there are still good players out there you just hope that you know, at some point, you know, we get these announcements. They're in. We know who the guys are, and we go from there. Well, I don't know. Like, in on August 1st, can you still be trying to get the players for that year that should be coming weeks away from the start of the semester? And do they have to get semester? a waiver to be able and, to play? Can right? they still just come in? Yeah. We know BYU is actively recruiting and that they're shooting their shot. Like, we see a lot of guys yeah. on social media, hey, BYU is in my top 10, my top 5, my top 20, whatever. I love that BYU is doing that because you will land some of those guys. That's how they got Matt Harms. Right. That's how they got Brandon Averett, obviously, the connection with EVU, but an Alex Barcelo and so on. So uh, that's, I guess that's my only concern is, okay, at what point are we actually going to get these guys? Because we have this unanswered question, and we are uneasy because we don't have the answer. But once we do, I think we'll be a, a little easy, and we can go, do we feel like this is a tournament-type team or not? The hope is yes. And if you're on social media and, and you're locked into Twitter all day long, you just see Indiana gets this guy, St. John's gets this guy, Connecticut's got this guy. Where, where are our guys? And, uh, and then that's where the panic comes. Yeah. It's like, uh, are, we not even in, are we not even in the game? Are we, are we, are we working on getting Because we've guys? had one transfer in Rudy Williams from yeah. Coastal. Right. Obviously, Braden Moore is out of high school. Uh, excited about his potential. I'm not sure Braden Moore is a – he's going to start and get us to the NCAA tournament guy right away. He could be probably a role player this first year, perhaps. Maybe it's bigger. We'll see. But it's more of those Rudys. It feels like two more need to be around for this to work, um, and one of them's got to be a center, and one of them's yeah. probably got to be a uh, And I thought he addressed some of that today, and that was great. And yeah. it's just great. To, you just want to hear from the captain of the ship. Whether it's – when if you're in a storm, you want to hear the captain go, hey – 
It's going to be okay. I'm in charge. But also, even if he's not, you just want to hear that. Yes, yes. And I'm not going to, if I'm Mark, I don't tell you the worst feeling I have right. or, or the reality per se. I, I need to paint a picture that is positive and encouraging. And I sincerely do believe him, though. Yeah. Okay. Our question of the day Which BYU team wins the first Big 12 title? At CL underscore living on Twitter. Women's basketball and Shaley returns for the championship. Now, if Shaley is a fifth year se- returns, and there's still a shot, as Lee Kamard told us. Right. Um, it'd be her fifth year, uh, BYU's first in the Big 12. They've got a shot at that. And then they make the Final Four. Then a number two uniform jersey is a uh, – right, you could just and, say one of those two. And raise to the ceiling. And just a tag team with, with that is Shaley, yes, and Lauren Gustin, who's one yes. of the top rebounders in the entire country. She would be a senior as well with Gonzalez and the, and the others. So she's a needed piece. Very much so as they move forward. And, yeah, with those two pieces in there, I think uh, I think you got a shot. I think no one beats cross country first. I think cross country goes in right away, and boom, they bring home some hardware. Uh, at the, the Terminator, women's soccer is my go for guaranteed success. They're going to compete for a long time. Last year was a special year. It's going to be hard to replace Michaela Coulihan, who – I would argue is the best player in program history, despite having not having the most goals, but her influence was incredible. Uh, Herman Trophy finalist, probably should have won it, did not. By the way, she found out she didn't win it the night of her wedding, so there were some mixed emotions there. That was tough at the reception. People were like, ah, should have won it. But anyways, great day. Back, Paula, Hap- happiest saying, day of your I life. I feel so bad for you. That, that her <laughs> husband's like, what are you talking about? I know, I'm in the line are going, we, hey, we? really sorry. <laughs> yeah, but well, congratulations. Yeah. Um, that, that team is always good. Though. And they've got a home field always advantage. Good. All those Big 12 schools have got to come to Southfield, and Southfield's a magical place. The All field the, house yes. is a magical place for volleyball. Yes. And um, so not only is the team good, you know, half of those league games are going to be right here. You don't have to go undefeated to win the Big 12 because everyone's pretty good. But, boy, you've got half the league coming to your place. You can defend your home court or home turf against anybody. You've proven that. And that's that's going to be that's why men's basketball is going to have some opportunities early because of the Marriott Center. Yes. And twenty two thousand or twenty thousand fans. Nineteen. Now. Nineteen. Yeah. You, yeah. Back in the. Is the fire marshal there or not that day? <laughs> yeah. Without yeah. the fire marshal. twenty. <laughs> uh, but but that environment. OK. Going to Kansas. You know, we wish everybody good luck going to Kansas. Kansas coming here with the Marriott Center magic. Uh, well, Gonzaga ran into that. Yep. Um, Kansas can run into that. Yep. Uh, so we got great venues to host this kind of stuff. It's going to be fun, and you, you just you just played into the the special nature of home fields and courts for BYU sports across the board. Like, how awesome are you, Cougar Nation, at these games, creating a home field where BYU has this fortress that is hard to win at in soccer and volleyball, both of them, mm-hmm. football and both basketballs, like. It is a special place to play, so it's going to be fun in the Big 12 when we have even bigger games more consistently. Coming up, our elite voice of the day. And today's rising shout-out goes to a walk-on who just became an All-American in about two-ish months. An incredible story. That's a fast we track. We will literally fast track. <laughs> this is BYU Sports Day. They prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realize that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content all for free on the BYU TV app. 
Every day, I help an animal walk again. Four different vets told me that he would never be able to walk. Here's his leg. Oh, my God. That's so yeah. cool. Go, <laughs> she wants to move, and this device is allowing her to do so. I just knew he would walk. Every single step, it's doing exactly what I want. You can see the trust. You can see the connection in her brain forming. Best is yet to come. It is. It's only going to get sweeter. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation's on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps and do it this morning or this afternoon. Download the podcast as well on your favorite podcast platform. Please subscribe, rate, and review us. Which BYU team wins the first Big 12 title? Our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at Tyson Peterson on Twitter. Men's Cross Country has won seven consecutive West Coast Conference title titles. Big 12 will be no problem for them. I say women's will win it first because they literally run right before the men do. Okay, The women are as good as the men in cross country, and they go first, and they're going to win the first. So the men might win the second one? The men will win the second one. They go B2B right there. That's what I think it happens. Okay, today's Rise and Shout is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Was it last week? Sebastian Fernandez came in, and we talked about his story of being a walk-on in March, trying out for the team and running kind of a 150, 151. Ed Eistone says, all right, you can be on the team as a walk-on. He runs in the BYU Cougar Invitational in Provo. He sets the Robison Invitational facility record with a 147 in the 800. All of a sudden... He's not just on the team. He's in the record books. He qualifies for NCAA preliminaries. He goes to Arkansas. His family drives all the way from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. He qualifies for nationals. He came in and talked to us, and Spencer asked him about some of his goals at nationals, which he did last night. Well, it's one thing to (laughs) do it once, but now you've done it multiple times. And Mm -hmm. so let's put this into context a little bit. Let's say you run a 147 again at nationals. Mm Mm-hmm. Where would that place you based on the times that have been run this year? Um, I can't remember what was run at regionals, but I feel like it would, it wouldn't, I don't think it would move me on to the final probably, but I think it would be a very solid time to put me like maybe second team All American. And last night, Sebastian Fernandez ran a 147.66, just as he mentioned which got him 11th place total. He didn't qualify for the final, right. the top eight. But in the, in the next eight spots, you were a second-team All-American. What an incredible journey for him the last two-ish months. Disney makes movies about this kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the Ziggy Ansa movie, by the way. Yeah. Is that not much better than, uh, what was it, Million Dollar Arm with the with, right. uh, cricket players? Absolutely. Ziggy actually played in the NFL. Those guys didn't even play in MLB. <laughs> Come on, man. Our right, thanks to today's guest. Mark Pope. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time. Great to have Coach Pope here. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Dave, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Katie Larkin. Join us tomorrow for the Reviewables BYU Football 2001 featuring Brandon Doman. Go Cougs.